So load stick sounds complicated, but it really isn't. So basically it's just a, a, a the stick that goes in and replaces your shock. Um, and it can uh, tell you your weight of So you zero, zero it out, of course. So what I do with my load stick is, is how I got my, everybody talks about your load, what is your load number? You know, so what, what you'll be talking about load numbers for each corner. For you guys without a coilover, or for us, we use a smasher for the rear numbers, but to get your numbers, pretty simple deal. Scale your car on what, what you're wanting it to be scaled out as. The whole key is finding the exact center to center of where the shock goes. And, and, that, and, that, and what I did was is I just had some more sticks and I basically started on the left front, scaled the car exactly like it was at right heights, all your numbers, at wherever you're gonna be racing this thing at. I put a solid stick in the left front, my numbers were right on. Put a solid stick in the right front, my numbers right on, solid stick in the left rear and right rear. So now you can take that stick and go to a, a tool where you can measure the exact center to center of what each corner is and you record that number. And do you know what he's talking about when he's setting the car with sticks? Just uh, nothing more than uh, two himes and a tube. So you can put your bolt in and it's a dead on center to center. Um, See here is our four for like a GRT modified. These are set so you put these on the modified, one of our cars, and it, everything is set at ride height. So you bolt these things on and the car and it's completely set at ride height. So you're on a scales in all reality, you're on all four corners solid. So now you know exactly what your center to centers are. Now you can go to a simple tool and put that in a simple tool and measure the dead on exact center to center. So then I take the load stick, put it back on that tool, put that center to center on, pretty simple, bolt it to the car, lift the front end up, and whatever that number is, is kind of your number, your load, your load number that you're looking at. So after, after you lift the car up, after it's you, it's showing it what show load you, would be on that car if it was on the ground. Um, you can't pick this corner up, can you, Bob? Um, no. No. No, we cannot so, raise it up. It's a step. When you pick it up, the weight of the spring, the load of the spring is going to dictate a number of what that is going to be. So it's, it's not going to let it extend. It's not going to let it extend. So it's hold it on the center to center. So now you've got a number. So that number will dictate pretty much your ride height, your wedge number, everything you want to know about that corner. So if you want to change from a thousand pound spring to an 1800 pound spring, you put that load stick back in there on that exact center to center, adjust your jack bolt, Till you get your number that you've got recorded. Okay, so that's one way to work with a load stick. Pretty simple. If you're doing turns or you're putting wedge in and you wanna get back to your baseline, pretty simple. Go back to your center to center, put it on that corner, go back to your load number. The car is scaled in all reality. Most definitely at the racetrack. Yeah. Most definitely if you yeah. are changing, changing springs. Okay, so now that's all four corners, so, or the front end. I'm not done on my stock car, but I think this is the direction I'm gonna head. I'm gonna get the load stick for the rear. So everything is the right center to center. So I'm gonna put a load stick on the right rear, and then I'm gonna put the solid stick on the left rear and see where that number is. So that one you would have to have it on the other side in order to be so able to do- solid stick on the left rear. So when it's hanging- You're the shock over there, otherwise it'll let it hang wrong. Otherwise it'll hang and it won't be a consistent deal. So that's that's my plan is, is to have that, that number. So in all reality, you can, run around with the load stick and have them center to centers and scale your car in just a matter of a few minutes, really, once you got them numbers. Now, as long as shock mounts are consistent and your shock mounts are consistent on the bottom and on the top, that's gonna be pretty consistent from car to car to car to car if, if people are jigging their shock mounts. So one car to the next car. So now that load number is dictated by a lot of things. It's dictated by um, how much wedge you run, how much left side you run, how much rear you run, so it's dictated by a lot of different numbers there. So then we talk about, now we got a standard number. So now what gets really fun and really stretches your brain out a little bit is now with the load stick, it's a, a, a ratcheting one and you see the number going up. So now you can pull the right front down 
to a dynamic number of where you think you're racing the car at. Three inches of travel, four inches of travel, and, and see where your load number is. So now what you can do is get really fancy with shocks, soft springs, letting the right front come up higher. Let's, let's go with a shock that ties it at right height. So now we can pull this thing down and say you're running a thousand pound right front spring and you're getting three and a half inches of travel. So now you can measure your three and a half inches of travel, pull it down to three and a half inches, see where your load number is. Record that. Now let's get really tricky. Now we can put a uh, 800 pound spring in or a 700 pound spring. We can lock it at right height with the shock if we want. And then we can preload that shock until three and a half inches. We got a similar load number at our three and a half inches of travel with a soft spring. So now you can manipulate the second and third inch of your travel with a softer spring. That second way you can play with the load stick. Third way is, is flat, just put a softer spring. Now you guys, we don't have a right height rule as far as a deck height rule. So what a lot of guys are doing in the late model world, I don't know if you guys watch late models racing, their noses are like this far off the ground, their right fronts, then all of a sudden they touch the throttle and they're pinned up. Well, when the right front comes up, what's it doing to the back deck with a deck height rule? It's dropping it. So now all of a sudden you can raise your right front way up, drops to the left rear deck, now you can bring the deck mount up to manipulate the, the rule. So in full dynamics, the deck is higher in air, more air. Stock cars don't have the deck rule, so that's not quite a big a deal. So what they do is put a super soft spring in there. They're still getting their load number, but they're just letting the right front come way up. If you look at uh, pictures again, uh, there was a zero car that went out west, and when he's sitting in victory lane, his right upper A-frame is almost running downhill, and his right front frame rails off the ground like this far you know he's on a pretty darn soft spring with a real high ride height. And you about guarantee you his deck has been raised back up to, you know, get your 38 inch deck rule. So stock cars don't have that. So I would not, you're not gonna have to go that route, but no question you can run a soft spring preloaded and, and, and get by with a lot softer spring. And again, manipulate a softer uh, spring. So your travel through your two inch, now keep in mind, we're gonna preload this spring <clears throat> with a fair amount of number if you're looking at dropping 200 pounds of spring rate out of the car to get your final load number. But at one point through the travel of the spring, once you break preload, you are on that soft spring. And that's when I said you can manipulate the second and third inch of your travels and make the car so it has attitude all the time. You still got the load number so it doesn't bottom out but then you have a car that's kind of rocked up a fair amount on the right front. If you are sorry, we can bring you over the shots. Is there any uh, trick around that maybe uh, more you don't you'll, you'll have to use the weight of the car as long as you don't do it with the shock. So do as much as you can just with the weight of the car setting down on it when you put it all on. You're pretty much so set gonna, it. That's where it's going to limit you. Yeah, you're definitely limited if you can't preload a shock or a chain of some sort. The other thing I would say with that light of a spring, you probably wear them out quicker, so watch them maintenance springs are there's some springs pretty pretty good springs out there so again check the, the free height of the spring but if you coil bind them or that soft on them you will they will wear out fast they can no question so just one of our best seasons we had we, we actually did a clamshell coil bind and i don't want to get too far off track where the, the coil if you completely coil bind a spring it's pretty solid but if you clamshell it and you touch on the outside edges it still gives a little bit and we we, we run a 450 Begin of the night, end of the night, all year, all night, didn't matter because when the track was fast, it coil bound, kept the thing out of the dirt. And then when the track slowed down, it didn't coil bind, so we were back to a 450. So it was a, and we didn't have low sticks. This was like seven, eight years ago when we won quite a few races. 450, clamshelled, and just run the hell out of that spring. When it was bound up, it was like, <laughs> you would have never even thought that spring would have lasted one night, let alone 50 nights. So you can't clamshell coil bind one. It's called clamshell in it. So literally the outside edges are touching and the back ones have like this much gap in there. It looked like it was just gonna fly apart in there, but. So with your load stick that you're doing there, you're kind of telling me our ride heights don't need as much. That's what's really, I'm a ride height freak. 
of getting right heights. Now you, you do all this work and get all your right heights spot on, and then you just start cranking on shit. <laughs> Uh, literally, you start with them, you start with them yeah. for your baseline. And then, you know, if you want more load, less load. So from there, we can talk about what's really nice about this number here is so now the track's starting to really slick off. You've got the same load number at a three and a half inch travel with a thousand pound spring. But now we got an 800. Now the track's slicking it off. What can you do? Just take two or three turns of load out of it. Now, now your soft spring. Um, will be a, a soft spring by just taking, you know, figure out what turn is, what one turn of load is with a thousand pound spring. Like a, 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 for me, my 450 spring, my modified, it's like 35 pounds a turn. So basically if I wanna go from a, a 25 pound softer spring, I take a turn, turn and a half out of it. And now I've got a 25 pound softer spring, just turn it on the jet bolt. Pretty simple deal. So at this point, you're gonna build your notebook of Okay, so we know early night we're going to need a load number of 3,000 pounds, but when it's really slick and slow, we need about a 2,400 pound load number. You know, you can do your cranking and attitude, or we talked about rocking the car up, same thing, taking turns out so the car's got rock in it, so it's pinned up on the right front to steer. So when I talk about rocking the car up, it's nothing more than taking turns out of the right front, just to put the right front down into the racetrack and give the car the attitude. So the weight transfer is starting to go to that corner right away so nothing more than taking turns out of the right front that's one of my adjustments a lot on the stock car is just put it one or two turns in or take one or two three turns out and just rock the car up Are you putting it in the rear you out the if you're wanting to maintain a wedge number out of the right front into the left rear if but, you don't care about that sometimes it's just physically taking turns out of the right front just to get it there just, just to, to get it there like kelly talked you know you got to manipulate you got to make these cars do it and sometimes it just takes just that one corner one corner to, to manipulate that corner. physically initiate that start so you don't care so much about keeping your now all of a sudden your right heights are low but you know really we want it to the track slow down a second and a half well guess what that weight transfer we talk about from it, it it's not there so you know you can soften springs or just get the right front down into the racetrack so right front's down, right rear's down. Right front's down, right rear's down, make side bite, car will steer and make side bite on the right rear tire. So whatever you can do, and Bob stresses all the time, whatever you can do, when I go out in any race and anything I can do, what can I go, what can I do in my race car to go through number two faster? That's all I think about. Is it a little tight or is it a little loose or what do we need to do to go faster? Because if you can go faster through two, I promise you, your, your miles per hour is gonna multiply off the corner and down the straightaway. Two or three mile an hour through the corner is four or five, six mile an hour down the straightaway. You can't pass somebody that's going six miles an hour faster than you are. Can't do it. So how much are you talking as far as changing the ride heights? I mean, doesn't that, if you start affecting the ride heights a whole bunch, now you're changing the roll center, aren't you due to that? No, now you're, you are, but you're not. You're, 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 you're changing, getting to your migration of where your roll center is going to be, ultimately. Yeah, because we, we, like those diagrams that we used yesterday show things set in <coughs> static mode. <coughs> now we're talking about dynamic mode. So, so that's, it's gonna get there. So it's kind of like a shock. You're just getting it, you're manipulating the car to get to. If we could just set the car to our dynamics of what we want to race at, that's really where most, teams would probably set their right heights, but you know, you would never get through tech and- uh, That's what I was gonna say, static right heights. I think in the future, static right heights are gonna be a thing of the past. It's gonna be, you're gonna load stick the car and then they go racing. At least right heights will tell you, now here's the thing, you start changing right heights a, a bunch, your left side weight numbers are gonna be different. So we still need some sort of a, a standard standard to, to, to get your uh, rear percentage right and get your left side percentage right and get your, your rear end, which on the stock car, we don't have no pan hard bar, but on a modified, you start changing right heights an inch, the rear end moves a half inch and your trail number moves a mile. So, you know, we still need some sort of baseline to just go, okay, this, everything is right. Now we're just going to dynamic racing on the scales. And then all them numbers are completely whacked out. I mean, completely rear end move, opinion angle changes, uh, lead changes, everything, uh, everything changes. But at least in a, where I say stock car technology is, is really cool. Yeah, way cool.